All right, Lee, episode three. Today we get into the practical world. We go from PMP to the real world of running projects. And we're going to talk about how to stand out as a regular project, real project manager after you get to PMP, or once you've elevated yourself. So when you've seen PMPs come and go, what are some of the big things that make PMP or uh, project managers stand out in your mind as they start to like be a practitioner? Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Uh, the third one, we're getting right into the real world. I like that. I, yes, sir. I know, we know you have to talk about the PMP and all that. You got to make sure everybody understands that it's worthy of getting and all that. But at the end of the day, uh, somebody with a PMP that doesn't do project management very well just wasted a lot of everybody's time. So <laughs> when, when you get a PMP, there's an implied knowledge level there that uh, if you don't live up to it, uh, then you basically failed. I I, I've gone into so many meetings in the last couple of years and, and asked the question of how many of you uh, work with PMPs? And oh my gosh, all the hands go up. And I said, well, how many of you work with PMPs who aren't? And a whole bunch of hands go up on that too. So I think it's important that we realize that the credential is a, a door opener, <laughs> but at the end of the day, if you don't perform, you're going to get kicked out of that door in a, in a hurry. So this is a this is a good topic. I'm going to use my own case now because I, I, I started out as an engineering designer in, in doing double wall cryogenic tanks. And I mean, really exciting stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and quickly realized I don't, I'm not, I don't like it. I don't, I hate it. I don't like engineering. So I started to look around for something to do that would be a little bit more amenable to my skill set. And it came up with the word project management. Uh, mm -hmm. started that in 73. But what I found out was, no matter whether it's project manager or anything really, but project management, in order to really be recognized as a value add uh, person on the organization, you got to do something that shows you are. I mean, you yeah. can't just talk about it. I've, I've worked with a lot of people that, that just talk about how good they are. I mean, I've, I've run into some right here on, on these LinkedIn <laughs> posts sometimes that, you know, you, you listen to them and you think, my gosh, these guys must really be good. And then you do some triangulation with references and find out they don't know Jack about Jack. Uh, and so it's demonstration. That That's the key yes. is demonstrated uh, performance. Now you can take the easy road, uh, which is just make sure you know how to apply the mm -hmm. concepts of uh, 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 of the PMP, those those fundamental uh, PMBOK oriented things, the schedules right. and the, all of that. You can do that, and you'll be safe with that, and you'll you'll probably uh, have a decent career uh, being just a, a, a contributor. Okay, but I don't. Right. I'm not satisfied with that, and I, I don't think <laughs> uh, a lot of people are satisfied with that. So my my uh, issue with project management and being successful is that you got to be a risk taker. Uh, uh -huh. If you feel comfortable about your skill set and if you feel that you can add value above and beyond what the expectations are, then you got to go for it. Uh, and that's basically what I've built my career on is volunteering mm. to do things that nobody else had the courage to do. Uh, implementing an enterprise-wide project management system in a national laboratory environment, well, that people would run from that like you, they don't want any part of it. Well, as right. soon as I saw that going on, the first thing I did is volunteer to do it. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and then, you know, you got to be able to do it or you're taking a pretty big risk. But to me, that's the key to separate yourself from the pack. I mean, there, there's a there's 1.2 million uh, PMPs, and and we they're not all equal in capability and skills. And so, if you want to really uh, achieve some height in your career, you got to separate yourself from the pack. And the way you do that is you make big things happen in your organization. You you make things happen that when somebody says, "My gosh, how did that happen?" They say, "Well, uh, Lee did that." Well, that's yeah. great. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from the other people because they didn't have the courage to volunteer to do it in the first place. And so that's the way I've built my career, really, from from the 1970 time frame right up, up until now. And even even now, this new role that I'm playing with this company, mm -hmm. uh, 
knowledge transfer. I mean, that's a pretty ambiguous role. But when I get done, there's going to be a hell of a lot of smart people in the world because we're going to <laughs> transfer a lot of knowledge into their uh, capabilities. And that's what we need. We need we we need pe we need people with credentials. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I was one of the mm -hmm. creators. I I love the PMP. But the fact of the matter is that the, the the PMP having the PMP certification doesn't really guarantee performance level. And yeah. so you've got to make it yourself. You've got to, you got to make it or you're going to break it. And it's kind of that simple. So that's been my, my philosophy all along. I love that. I mean, I, I imagine if some people, probably a lot of people didn't expect you to say, Hey, we're going to deliver value. They might've thought that, but the risk taking aspect of that. So that first time that you went out there and you saw that enterprise wide thing and you put your foot forward and said, I'll do it when everybody else takes a step back. What, what were you feeling in that point? Did you know like, hey, this is a make or break thing for me or what, what did it feel like? Yeah, well, I knew, I knew uh, that performance is key. I'd, I'd had enough uh, bad performance reviews uh, in my earlier days and I knew that they were pretty important. Uh, and so I saw this as an opportunity uh, to take something on that looked a lot more challenging than what my engineering designing work that I was doing. So we were having to implement a uh, earned value, enterprise-wide earned value for the Department of Energy at the time, mm -hmm. uh, working on the breeder reactor project. And uh, nobody at GE in the engineering department, nobody really knew what the heck that was. And, and we had some consultant decisions planning corporation i've stayed friends with those guys all these years they, they they were consulting for us to help us get ready for a mock demonstration review uh and they needed to do training but ge didn't want to pay their people to do training so they gathered about 20 of us engineers in this room and they said we we don't we don't know anything about earned value, uh, but we need to teach it to all of our engineers. We had about 300 engineers. Uh, yeah. And so what we're looking for is somebody, uh, we need three people to volunteer to become uh, instructors for earned value. And uh, they said, we got any volunteers? And uh, I was the only one that raised my hand. There were 19 other people. Uh, I don't know if they were afraid of it. I don't know if they were too comfortable doing engineering work. But I raised my hand. In fact, I jumped up and raised my hand. Uh, and uh, so they said, OK, Lee, you, you got it. So that's how it all started for me. Uh, and, and what I found was that the risk I was willing to take, I mean, if you, if you crash and burn on a Thing like that that's probably you're probably history so uh, mm -hmm. that risk was 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 not weighed as clearly as, in retrospect i might not have volunteered that day uh, <laughs> but i i think it uh it's the key to me i think all the pro all the roles i've held in all the organizations i've worked for have been uh, beyond expectations in other words doing mm -hmm. things that nobody had done before nobody dared do before and mm -hmm. i think if you're not willing to take that those risks then you you won't reap the rewards it's as simple as that i mean it's just a decision i'm not mm -hmm. saying everybody should do it but if you want to be at the top of the heap you got to climb your way up there nobody's going to set you on top of the heap now i love it i think that's really really great taking that first step forward and then one of the things that i see i don't know if you agree with this is that a lot of people as they get into project management they start to build it they think it they see themselves as the the pinnacle of like everything is re relies on them they have to take the, you know, have, they have to do everything themselves. And so while you're taking that jump, Lee, when you went out there, were you going to say, I'm going to do this all myself? Or do you see like the high performers going, hey, I'm building this team, I'm building this network of influence so that, I mean, I'm going to do a heck of a lot of work myself, but I'm going to kill the kill it with with the, with the network yeah, how do you absolutely. see people going I'm, I'm giving away all my secrets here uh that's all right i mean here, that's all right. here's the thing uh I, I when i volunteered the first thing i thought was oh my gosh how, how am i going to do this i don't know anything about it plus i got to teach 300 engineers how to pass a, a demonstration review and then i began to realize you know when you when you get when you volunteer for those positions you've got to understand that you can't do it on your own you mm -hmm. you have to be you have to rely on the people the team that you have available to you uh, to make things happen my philosophy has been forever and a lot of people say i'm lazy and well they'd probably <laughs> be right but the fact of the matter is uh, one of the things i don't want to do is work uh, I just am not up for it. It's not my, it's not my thing. And so what I learned a long time ago is surround myself with the best damn people in the world and I'll look good when they're done. 
<laughs> so that's what I've always done. I, I, I've always emphasized the people that I hire for these kinds of roles are people that are better than I am, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, better than I am. And, uh, and if I get enough people better than I am, then I'm going up. And that's the way I've played it forever. I've never changed my mode of operation. That's awesome. And, and like hiring's one thing. So like a lot of people in the environment, they're like, well, I don't have the resources to hire. Like I'm a new project manager. I have to influence and other things like that. Um, what are some of those skills that great project managers have to be able to get that team to say, I know, I know you have a full-time job. I need you because you're smart. Like, how do we do that? Yeah, you, you, uh, you, you have to spend some time uh, building relationships, okay? Uh, and, and But at the same time, you've got to paint the picture of what's in it for them. Because what I found in a matrix organization, if I can do a good job of convincing people there's something in it for them, uh, if push comes to shove, they're going to work for my project. If they're assigned yeah. to two, three projects at the end of the day, they're going to come work for me because mm -hmm. they know what's in it for them. They know that I'll support the efforts that they're trying to uh, undertake. And so I've never had a problem with that. I, I, uh, this project I did over in Indiana was, uh, was three year project. We got it done in 18 months and the people worked 14 hours a day, seven days a week for 18 months. And they did it because I convinced them it was worth doing. Uh, yeah. And so there, there was no extra money. There was no overtime. It was for the pride of, of contributing to the effort that we had to undertake. So I, I uh, here, here's a, a term that I use. I, I, I use it a lot is uh, you, you have to have uh, motivation. You have to have that, but mm -hmm. I, I do manipulative motivation. Uh, okay. And that, that, that basically says, hey, I'm going to motivate them, but I'm going to make sure they're targeted at what we need to get done. So uh, we people, I, I talk to this uh, about this to people and they say, no, you can't. You can't manipulate people. You don't you don't want to manipulate people. And I say, well, it's OK <laughs> if you manipulate them, if at the end of the day they're happy with what happened. It's when they walk away upset about what happened that they say, well, that sucker manipulated me. Uh, and I did that. I mean, I, I talked three guys to shovel horse shit in a rodeo parade for four years. I couldn't get rid of them. And they weren't getting anything for it, except I convinced them it was worth their time to be seen by 60,000 people, whether they were shoveling horse dung or not. And so that that's that's kind of the that's kind of the approach uh, today in today's world with matrix the way it is mm -hmm. there's nobody's available e everybody's 100 percent committed and so if mm -hmm. you're going to do anything above and beyond you got to figure out a way to convince them that they want to be with you today and that that's basically what we do and it seems to be all about vision that you were able to take the great example of shoveling horseshit to like yep. they yep. saw something in your vision my assumption is and in all other projects so do you always start by, you seem like a vision, a visionary guy, obviously, like you start with like getting them into, this is where we're going and this is how you play into it. And there it becomes theirs or what's the, what's yeah, the Yeah, I think what you have to be careful with project management, the, the risk is that you can become trapped in minutia. Mm. Uh, and, and so before, before I even start to talk about any of those kinds of details, I want to paint the big picture. I want people to understand. I mean, these people that work 200 people work 14 hours a day. That yeah. They did that because we spent some time laying out what the end result would be. And in this case, it was save the company. It was a company job that if yeah. they didn't get it done, they were going to shut the doors. And so all of a sudden people go, Hey, well, I want to be a part of that. Uh, mm -hmm. And then once that happens, then you can start to work in the minutia. I mean, we all know everybody's got a role and everybody has to do their job before the whole thing can be done. But I, I think one of the big mistakes right, right now is, is we don't, we don't, sell the idea of, of participating on this yes. project. We don't, we don't, uh, we, we basically say that's your job. That's what you're supposed to do. Go do it. Well, you might get 60% productivity out of that relationship, but if you can convince them, Hey, yeah, they're a key player in this project that every piece of work they do is going to add value. Then pretty soon you got a committed person that you're going to get a hundred, 110% of their, their productivity out of them. I love it. And I love the idea that, I mean, I can see how people come out of like 
they're just a brick and mortar project manager. They get the PMP. They're focused heavily on maybe they're focused on EVM, like you're talking about the actual nuts and bolts of it. And they just grind themselves down in that level instead of like raising up to say, I have to energize and motivate, manipulate an environment to get all the people streamlined. Um, really, like you talked about the sales part of it. Like, what are some of the, the way, I think that's giant in, I think there's like a mind, like a major hole as far as like the ability to sell and it not be a nasty word. Um, how do you look at selling projects? Like, is it a positive thing for you? How, how do you think about it? It's a, it's a positive thing after I grill management uh, as to why we're doing this and what's it going to okay. add in the way of value. Once I get a, once I have an understanding of, uh, of the purpose or of the result that they're expecting, uh, then mm-hmm. once I convince that I, I believe in it, that I support it, then, then I'm all for it. You can't, you yeah. won't be able to turn me off. I'll get the, the thing done. Uh, I've never had a project fail. Uh, I've had some go over schedule a little bit, but I've never had one fail. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's because we were thinking two weeks ahead. Our, our thought process wasn't dealing in today's work. It was dealing in two weeks ahead uh, based on cause and effect impacts of what we were doing today. And all of right. a sudden, people began to realize, well, what I'm doing today really can have an impact on this project two weeks from now. And if you don't use the tools of project management to identify what those contributions are, you'll never mm-hmm. get people committed. They're, they're going to look at it as a job and that's the one thing that the people who work with me we don't we don't look at it as a job we look at it as an opportunity to be successful an opportunity to prove that you're not just a pmp but you're actually a a good project manager and we have to spill that on to just the 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 underbelly of projects those poor individual contributors who don't have a pmp who who Mm -hmm. don't really have higher level degrees but the whole world really rests on them and if you can convince them of that then they're going to work 10, 12 hours a day, uh, because that's what they realize their contribution is. We, I don't think we spend enough time convincing people at all levels mm-hmm. the contribution they're going to make, the value they're adding mm. to the organization. And the beauty of project management is we can highlight that. We yeah. can highlight you're yeah. on the critical path. We can highlight where you are with float paths. You can begin to see, hey, I see where I fit. And if, if, if I'm a week behind, is this going to have a major impact on the project? I want to be able to contribute that. So, so now this yeah. poor guy who's just grinding out a software program realizes, hey, this is, this is one of the long poles in the tent. Uh, and yeah. so they're going to spend the time it takes to get that work done. Yeah, I love that. So you're empowering people. I love the thing that like a, a real standout project manager is one of those guys that like puts the focus on what we're trying to achieve also allows those people to see this, is how we play it. And everybody's got to raise to that standard of what we expect. Um, now you mentioned something with management when you're pushing back on management to make sure that there's value there, that you understand what you're delivering on really great project managers that, you know, distinguish themselves how do they operate and how do they communicate with management? What, what is the role that they play? How do they do it differently? Well, it's, it, it's kind of, uh, there's two kind of roles at play. Now there's the, uh, what I call the suck up who uh, kind of does whatever management says. And even though they know it's impossible, we can't do it. They, they, oh yeah, yes, yeah, sir. We'll do that. Uh, those, those guys are a dime a dozen. I mean, they're everywhere because they don't dare stand up. But if, mm-hmm. if you really want to not get yourself in a trap, you're going to have to be uh, candid with management. So when they say, we got a job, we can do it, we need to do it in a year, and you've done some preliminary work, and you said, well, it's, it's an 18-month project. And they said, no, no, we got to have it done in a year. Uh, you've got to be prepared to make that case. And if you end up having to do it on the one-year target, which is common, you better have the right. story documented that you raised those issues you had concerns but for the company you're going to do the best you can do and that's that's about all we can do when i took on the project in uh, indianapolis they told me they had to have it done as soon as possible i love that uh but they had targeted a a three (laughs) years for the effort okay and they said but we don't we doubt you'll make that and uh, and they were right we didn't make three years we made 18 months uh and so you you begin to see 
management doesn't always understand project management. If you go if you go into senior level management in an organization today and ask how many of them have a PMP, uh, I'd be surprised if you find any. Uh, because they, they don't right. know jack about project management. All they know is they, they got a bottom line, they need revenue, and they need, and that's all they know. They don't really know what it takes to deliver that. They don't know how many resources it really takes. And, and so management needs to be educated. And I think uh, Harold yes, Kersner has written a lot of books. If you've seen Harold's books, you have to get a hand truck to carry them. They're so darn big. Uh, <laughs> but he's written a lot of case studies about executive level and project management. Good stuff. He's really done some good stuff mm -hmm. uh, that really points out if you're going to have a project management oriented organization, you need a project management oriented executive for. And that's uh, that's what saved IBM when Lou Gerstner took over. He didn't have a PMP, obviously, but he had the mentality right. of a project manager and turned IBM around. Uh, other people had tried and they'd gotten into where they were projecting an $8 billion loss because they didn't know mm. what to do. He came in and three years later, they were profitable again. So you got to have that mentality. And the, the, the project management mentality is really pretty much common sense base. Now we've wrapped a lot of tools around it to make the generation of decision support information a little more easily accomplished. But the fact of the matter is, if you provide me with all the information, I'm going to let common sense drive my decision. Absolutely. Dead on. And then <clears throat> I love what you're talking about with the educating the executives, because I think a lot of people starting out are scared. Like they told me what to do. I may know it's wrong or, or think it's wrong. How do I push back in the right way? So I think you laid it out really, really well. And I think that there's there possibly is a risk, definitely a risk that you push back too hard, you end up dying, dying on this hill, yeah. right? Yeah. So occasionally sure. we yeah. have to go, hey, I've made my case. I'm your soldier. I'm gonna do this. I just want to keep you, I'm gonna keep you informed. We're gonna roll. And then I just and it, it's like a maybe they they learn, oh well, should have listened to him the first time. But he did a valiant yeah, effort trying exactly to get it right. through there. And basically, again, it comes back to what I mentioned very early on. It's a, it's about risk management. Uh, so when you yeah. stated what the risk is of not be, not completing on time and what the consequences might be, and then giving them the choice to make a decision based on the risk analysis, yes. if they choose to go, then we're going to go. There's no doubt about that. And and the word the the phrase they love to use to sort of insult you into compliance is, "Aren't you a team player?" Uh, and so you got to be careful that team player connotation, because when somebody says, aren't you a team player, you're getting screwed. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, they're asking you to just submit and be a lemming in a sense yep. and, and go there. They're not asking you. I mean, you essentially are. If done, it, if done correctly, if I understand what you're talking about, it's you're being a team player by saying, I got your best interest at heart. I'm not just yep. trying to save yep. my ass by saying, I don't want to take on anything complicated. I, I'm here for the fight. But I, sure, I want sure. to make sure that we win this fight. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to inform you, but, but let's roll if you want to roll. So Now, the yeah, other piece you know, that you have to know that if somebody's going to really be a, uh, let's call a superstar, is that you have yeah. to really spend some time documenting. Uh, yeah. in, in cases of dealing with senior level management, you got to have documentation because what I've found without it is they have what I call convenient memories. Uh, relative to things that were said, warnings that were given. Uh, and if you haven't documented it uh, for for post project evaluation, then you're you're going to lose all the value. I mean, all you did was have a little argument. That's it. You got nothing else to back it up. That's very true. And, and like the one when I was younger, I did some things. I had some run ins with executives. And then I realized, oh, if I put myself in their shoes and I look through their eyes, this is their big play. Like th they have a two year window, one year window, maybe a one chance window. They're in this big role. They got to make a play. This is their big play. I mean, and they're tapping me and others to, to make the big play for them. They're investing millions. So sure. we got to push back and make sure, Hey, we want to deliver, but this is what we see and then find the best way. Cause you know, having an argument, like you say, is not going to be good. Uh, anyway. well, I've, I've learned the hard way. I, I was actually, uh, I was going to say fired. That's not really true. I was asked to transfer uh, by two managers. 
who I uh, overplayed my hand uh, mm. and, uh, and, and got a little bit too assertive in, in playing that hand. So you've got to be careful uh, in how you play that hand uh, without, without the risk being of, of killing the golden goose, so to speak. So I, I, I learned twice. I mean, twice I, I had that happen. And in retrospect, now when that happened, I was really upset and called them all kinds of names. And, and now in retrospect, now that I've mellowed out a little bit, I'd have fired my ass too, if I were that. But you, uh, you have to realize we learn, we learn through experience. So it definitely would do things differently in those two cases. Uh, very true. Do you think that uh, these exceptional project managers are made or born? Well, I think they're, uh, shoot, that's a really a tough question because that, that leadership thing comes up all the time with that question. Yeah. Uh, I think in the project management side, they are born with the uh, capability mm. to be uh, a good project manager, but they they won't realize that until they capitalize on the knowledge that's out there. I mean, I, I, I think for me personally, I, I think I was a project manager from, from very, I mean, when I was just a teenager, almost so different kinds of projects, obviously. Yeah, uh, but I mean, just, I mean, just think about, it. I mean, it, my wife was a project, you know what I mean? I mean, uh, she was a, <laughs> she was a sophomore in high school. I was a senior. And so I laid out a project plan to, to, to get this girl. And uh, by the time she graduated, hell, it was done deal. We got married and that was that. <laughs> Uh, and that was a project. So I, I look back on that and say, well, hell, I laid that out. I had a schedule. I laid out tasks that need to be done. So, yeah, I think that was a natural for me. So I think people have the, the capability to do it. Rather they, they can hone those skills or not is, is a different question. Like for me, example, I, I never did take the time to mm. hone the use of automated systems like Microsoft project or some of those systems. I never, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't interested in that. I'm not interested in this, uh, getting this agile stuff going. I mean, I'm going to die in a couple of years. So who cares? Uh, so, yeah. but I never, I never really got good at using those. And it goes back to the thing we talked about earlier. I can hire somebody that can use that thing a hell of a lot better than I am. And so why yeah. would I waste my time learning how to do it? Uh, and so I kind of thought that way all along. I, I again, it's because I don't want to do work. I mean, I'm not crazy about work. Uh, and so you, you do what you need to do to be effective and that still satisfy your objectives. Absolutely. So you get things done, deliver value without sure. taking on the Herculean effort of, you know, bearing, bearing all this load by yourself. So, I mean, yep. in a sense, that is what a great project manager is. So, that is awesome. I think this is a heck of a heck of a first foray into the new or after PMP kind of talk. So from now on, we just talk real life and we talk yeah, about good. the details. <laughs> that's good. I, 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 uh, I counsel people all the time on, you know, congratulations on earning your PMP, but now you got to demonstrate you should have earned it. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I mean, I think that's one of the things that call, kind of a call to action that they go, like somebody asked me to speak to like some high schoolers in a while mm -hmm. ago. Uh, and I was like, what would I say? What am I going to say? And then I didn't want to be too, I didn't end up, we didn't end up doing it, schedule, whatever. But I was like, uh, okay, great job. Uh, now let's get humble and work real, real, real hard and deliver value. Like, yep. so the same yep. thing with PMPs, great job. Really proud of you. Day one again, let's go. And so <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. Or you're just going to have a thing on the wall and everybody's going to think you're nothing. So mm -hmm. we're good. Well, Lee, I really, really appreciate it. This is another great one. And next week we dive in even deeper. So thank you Good. again, sir. Hey, I look forward to it. Thanks, Scott. Take care. Yes, sir. All right.